Hey guys, this is Harv with Harv's Corner. Today we're going to talk about hatching eggs. And there's a couple different ways we can do it, and a couple, some ways are a bit more effective than others, but we're going to go in and out of all of them for the most part. Well, the easier ones anyway. Um, so let's say you're trying to hatch an egg and you're having problems with it being too hot, too cold, whatever the case is. You know how it goes. Um, you try to put them inside, you try to light torches around it, you try to do that. So there's, there's, there are those options when it says, that, oh, the egg's too cold. So you try to put around a t torches around it to warm it up. Or if the egg's too hot, you go to a biome that's colder to try to make the egg uh, work a little bit better. But let's say you just want to hatch the eggs at your base, not have to worry about that crap. This is what we're going to do. So there's a couple different ways we're going to do it. And we're going to talk about it real quick. So. Uh, I have a generator in there hooked up to air conditioners. These are standard air conditioners. Now, that's what these things are for. They're made to regulate temperature. Don't think of it as air conditioner like for your house or for your car, that it always makes things cooler. Think of the air conditioner as exactly that, conditioning the air to be at a nominal temperature. So what it does, and we're going to take what we have is a fertilized Dimetrodon egg of the two Dimetrodons we had sitting outside. And I'm going to drop it on the ground in front of these eggs and you can see that it's incubating and there's no timer needed. There's no worry about it and that it's incubating. The health is not going down. The incubation is going down because it's sitting by those incubators so, uh, because it's sitting by those air conditioners. So let's say I take that same egg and throw it out oh, and I hover over it. It says it's too hot because so it needs to be cooled down. So right away we know it's in a too hot temperature. So we definitely need it by those air conditioners. So we just needed, you just need to drop it down there. As you can see, I didn't need many. I only needed a couple. I didn't even need a room this big. I just kind of made it bigger just because I could. Um, what I would recommend is if you were making a small, a small area for uh, breed for egg hatching is to make something like this. But I would put a dino gate. I would make this taller and put a dino gate inside of it instead, mainly because some critters, when they come out of the eggs, are too big to fit through those doors and you won't have to worry about it. Um, so that's that's the gist. So uh, that's the first way to to, to, uh, to handle the eggs. So let's say I pick it up and let's say, well, I don't have air conditioners. I don't really want to do the air conditioning thing. Is there another option? There is. And that's actually the, the uh, Dimetrodons themselves. So if you're not aware, these guys, you'll usually find them in the swamp areas, just kind of meandering around. They're really slow. They're a pain in the ass to tame because their torpor is so high and their health is so low. You stand the risk of killing them quite often. You got to use trank darts or shocking trank darts. Most of the time, trank arrows or trying to hit it with a club are going to kill it without a problem. Um, you can kind of use trip, trip wire narc traps if you're familiar. You can lay them and have them run over a couple and then hit them with a couple of darts to do the final knockout, and that'll let you tame these guys. So I have a male and a female here, and they're mate boosted. So the, the, the stat to pay attention to these guys is actually their melee damage. The reason why is because their melee damage is a direct result of how much they can regulate the temperature around them. They work like portable air conditioners. So if I'm standing over here and... <clears throat> You can see what my hyperthermal, now I have my stats cranked up and I'm on game creative mode. So you can see that my hyper, hypo, and hyperthermal are very, um, are very high, right? That's because I've admin codes on and that's, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's never really, usually not going to be that high. But if I walk over in front of these two, and if I stand near them and go back and check my menu again, you'll notice it's bounced up over a thousand. That's crazy. It's over a thousand, right? So, and then let's go back over here and test this again. So I was sitting over here. And we were at about 62.99. And if I, and again, this number should really never be that high, but I'm just using for sake of argument. If I stand by the air conditioners here, I'm at 79.54. If I go over by these Dimetrodons, I'm 79.03. If I let this refresh, so about 7,800. So this is an option as well. The other cool thing about these guys is the more you upgrade their melee damage, the better they get at doing this. So think of them as portable air conditioners that you get to level up. So at the beginning, they might not be as good as having air conditioners, but if you get some levels into these guys, they'll actually be really good at it. So what I do is I drop the egg right by them and you see it's incubating in front of these guys. It just has to be near them. That's it. it. Just has to be near them and they'll take care of it. And this usually works with any eggs. If you have, and I've had this that even with eggs like uh, wyvern eggs that, that require it to be very, very hot temperatures in order for it to, to, to hatch, two or three of these Dimetrodons with a decent melee damage will hatch it without a problem. You won't need all those torches. You won't need 9,000 air conditioners. Um, you'll be able to do it in there. 
So there's a couple of other options and I'm gonna specifically talk to this because it's S plus. Whenever I try to go over any of these two tutorials, I try to go over an S plus variance as well because it's so widely used and because it's, it's just out there everywhere. I figured we would touch on it regardless. So one thing real quick to note is that the S plus ACs can actually snap into windows. These are the S plus ACs. So they're smaller and I'll place one on the ground here so you can see what I'm talking about. They're smaller than the normal ACs and they can actually like snap and stack to each other. So it makes them a bit more, you can organize them a bit more, but they also snap inside of window frames a lot better, which I really like. I think that's, that, that's, that's nifty. So you can actually have them like a little, you know, you can, you can do a smaller room, have them inside the windows and not taking up the floor space that you would usually use to hatch the egg in. So there, there's definitely that option too. Um, the other two things with uh, S plus, and we're going to talk about those as well. So the two things we want to go over is the the S plus hatchery and the S plus nanny. More so the hatchery for this video. That's really what we want to talk about. So the S plus hatchery, once you build it and place it, looks like a dodo in a nest, right? Um, so there's two ways to power this thing. You either need refertilizer specifically inside it, or it needs to be powered by a tech generator. So in order for these to work. So we're going to put refertilizer in here, here and just activate it. And you can tell it's activated because it'll have the little egg emblems and have the dodo. So as soon as you turn it on, if you notice our fertilized eggs gone, right? This would be the time to freak out. Don't worry. It's sitting inside of this guy. And if you notice it's incubators going down, its health is fine, but it's incubation is going down and, and the spoil time is astronomically higher. What this guy does, it picks up all fertilized eggs in the area and incubates it by himself. So now you don't even need air conditioners. You don't need the metronage. You don't need anything. You just need one of these to sit here. It'll get it all the way down to 1%. And once you, once you get it out of that 1%, you're still going to need, you know, you're still going to need these guys to do the initial hatching or the ACs to do the initial hatching, but that's it. This will get it down to 1% and you can kind of walk away from it and let it do its thing. Um, the nanny is something else that we'll place down here to kind of go over real quick. And this is all S plus related. Um, it requires giant bee honey for fuel or again, the tech generator. It will feed animals for you. Normally infant, whenever you're hatching something in the, in the, in the arc universe, uh, the first 10% of its lifespan, um, it won't actually eat out of a trough and need to hand feed it. The nanny will actually feed it and also run imprints on it as well. Uh, so these two in conjunction. Uh, with some small AC units or the Dimetrodons is pretty much what you're going to use to to hatch eggs. And you can see this thing is going by quick. You know, it was at 79, 78. Now it's at 60% already uh, or at 60. Yeah, it's at 60 out of 100. Um, so that's a super quick way to do it. So there's a lot of different methods to egg hatching and what works well for you and what doesn't. There are a few other creatures out there that add pretty good hyperthermal and hyperthermal, hypo and hyperthermal abilities to you. Um, the... You know, obviously the otters, one of the big ones that can ride on your shoulder and keep you warm. Uh, penguins actually do a really good job at that too. But the Demetrodons, they're the best because they give you both and they give you to you very well um, as far as, you know, uh, as far as using these guys to hatch eggs. I, I like their method. They just eat meat. They just kind of sit around. They don't take up a lot of space. Uh, I think they're pretty useful. But that's pretty much it. That's how you're going to hatch the eggs in the ARC universe, at least for the most part. We kind of went over the regular ways and the S plus ways. I always, and again, I always try to go over the S plus just because it's so popular and so well used around um, uh, around the ARC universe. But that's pretty much it. That's how you're going to hatch eggs in ARC. So if you liked the video, please like, please subscribe, please share it out. Please let me know what you think. Um, uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Also, if there's something else you want me to see or something else you want to see, uh, something else you want to see done or something explained, maybe an animal tame, how to do certain things, whatever the case is, uh, shoot me a comment let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Again, this is a part of a big playlist of a kind of an ARC 101 series where we just want to talk about um, the basics uh, and, and whether you're getting back into ARC or whether you've never played it, jumping into it, uh, we want to be able to have some, some, some documentation for you, explain some things so you don't beat your head against a wall like I used to all the time. Um, and a lot's changed if you haven't played ARC in a while too, so... Uh, that's pretty much it again. Thanks for hanging out guys. Uh, thanks for, thanks for watching and, uh, until next time.